You submitted the bid. You got the notification and you won. You are now officially a GovCon winner. And this is where the real work begins. Even before you start executing the thing, right? Product or service, you're probably wondering, how do I get paid? So I have some brief information to share with you so you not only know how to get paid, but that you are paid in a very quick manner. Typically as a small business, we are entitled to a quick pay, maybe within a few days, uh, maybe within a few weeks. One particular agency, the Department of Transportation, paid us as quick as 24 hours. Why all these rules and such are out there, plan on your payment taking longer than you anticipate because you never know. There are people behind all of these platforms I'm gonna talk about. You don't just magically get money into your account. There are human beings involved and they may be on vacation, maybe they're busy, maybe they don't realize that you have an invoice sitting there. So plan for, especially if it's your very first payment with an agency, 45 to 90 days, plan for it. Next, your payment information, your bank account, is tied to your SAM profile. Unless they're paying with a credit card, the money will go into your SAM profile designated banking account. So double check that. Just in case things change, or maybe you don't even remember which account you entered, check it because that's where the money will go as a direct deposit. Next, in every single actual contract, the said agency, bureau, department will list how and where you get paid. For instance, I saw an opportunity the other day. You have to email it to them. You have to email them an invoice. For agencies such as the USDA, they use a system called IPP. The Department of Defense typically uses the PIEE, the PI system. If you go into Google, I promise you, you type in IPP, government payment system or PIEE DOD payment system, the platforms will come up. The exact platform that you use or email or any other method is in the actual contract. Again, this varies if it's a simplified acquisition, if they're paying with a credit card or if you're not the prime contractor. So going forward as the prime contractor, you need to be aware of where you are to submit the information to get paid. The next thing is, if they are using a portal. The VA uses a portal. There may be some other portals out there in addition to IPP as well as PIEE, PI. You want to make sure your contract information is actually in the portal. In particular for PIEE, for PI. There's some really detailed codes and such. You want to make sure the codes in your contract match the codes in the PI system because if they don't, you won't get paid. That system is very finicky to the point of when you even submit or you upload attachments to um, support your invoice, often if the name is too long or it has some kind of symbol in it, they're not gonna allow you to upload that particular attachment. The same works for the IPP system in that you wanna make sure the contract is there and you wanna be careful with any kind of names that you provide to your attachments. If that information is off or it's missing, you immediately wanna contact your contracting officer or your contracting officer representative so that they can take care of it. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you're going along, you're excited, you won, you're executing the work. Meanwhile, you're in a position where you can't get paid. So we wanna take care of that on the front end. Also, when I say the front end, I'm speaking the first two weeks of actually getting the contract. You also want to check with your point of contact, ask them. It's much better to ask permission than forgiveness. Ask them, you know, when I go to sit my, submit my invoice or my invoices, would you like for me to email you a copy of the invoice? Or if the requirement is that you send the invoice to a certain email, 
asked them, would you like me to also copy you on that email or send you a separate email when I go to invoice? This is super important because there was a situation where an agency had no idea that we had submitted invoices. They had changed systems, all parties involved were confident that everything moved smoothly. And in reality, it didn't happen and they had no idea that we were submitting attachments into the platform. They thought everything was good. We thought everything was good. There was disconnect and payments were delayed. So please learn from that lesson. Don't do that. <laughs> Instead, you want to communicate with them ahead of time and frequently. So then if they say, yeah, by all means, submit an invoice, please email it to me. Then you do that because then it allows them to know, oh, okay, great. They submitted an invoice. I need to make sure that their payment is processed. And especially for those of you in this like construction space where maybe you're getting milestone payments or you're getting a payment for bonding purposes, you definitely want to make sure everything is set up because you don't want to be in that position where you're holding the bag. You don't want that at all. And even if you use a factoring company or you use a cabbage kind of company, it doesn't matter because you still have to get paid. So it's best to take care of all this within the first two weeks to identify where do you go? How do you get paid? Communicate with your point of contact. The next thing is you want to identify are any other supporting documents needed? Do you need to, which I believe is good practice. We do this with my flagship company, submit an invoice. Often we'll create an invoice in QuickBooks and put that into their system or to email it to the point of contact. Do they also want any type of time logs? Some of our clients do. So we provide those through our harvest account. Sometimes they may need some document that's signed off by someone with the government before they will pay you. Maybe they need to conduct some kind of visit or they need photographs. Who knows? but your client knows. So also ask them what other information is needed so that your invoice is processed smoothly. Next, especially during this time of the year, anticipate your payment is going to be delayed. And that is in the month of December. Many people are on leave. They're taking care of all these other things. And I have found being in this space for over 10 years, the December invoices tend to be delayed. It's just how it is. So plan accordingly. If it's your first invoice with an agency, plan. You may not receive those funds for 45 days. When it comes to December, plan. You may not receive the payment immediately. So when you have all of these things into place, when you're asking permission, where you're taking that initiative, when you're invoicing regularly and all of your accounts receivable are coming in, it shows the end client that you are an amazing and responsible business owner who they would like to do more business with. And it helps you as an entrepreneur to make sure you have your cash or you're able to fulfill the requirement you may have with a factoring company or any other type of lines of credit that you may have out there. Amazing GovCon winners. If this isn't you already, it will be. You'll be in this position. And I'm so excited for you. Make sure you like this video, you comment below, you share it, you hit the notification button, you go to govcomwinners.com to check out my uh, course that's coming out soon, get on that wait list, check out profitablecontracts.co. Now is the time to act because after I launch this, changes will happen and the price will go up. But what I'm launching is going to provide a great opportunity to each and every one of you to win, win more, win faster. I also have a new Facebook group, please join the Facebook group. I've been going live in the Facebook group. I've been sharing different tips. I would love to have you in my Facebook group. So until next time, don't forget, everything is possible.